Hello guys, and what is going on? Here today with another battle, or two battles. Um, the first battle is me played uh, as High Elves versus the Tomb Kings. Um, and the second battle is going to be played as the Vampires versus the Skaven. Um, so let's get into this. Uh, on my side I have Alario, a noble on foot. Um, I think four groups of spearmen? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Two sword masters of Hoeth, the Fireborn, um, two archers, and two bolt throwers. Um, I was expecting some constructs and infantry in the center, and I was hoping that having two bolt throwers spread out would allow me to, um, you know, have one of them constantly shooting, as I've done in previous videos. Uh, the sword masters of Hoeth are great against um, a lot of Tomb King's infantry. They do very well on the trade. However, my opponent did not bring the army that I expected. Something that should always be expected, I suppose, in ladder is your opponent is something unexpected. They have, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six groups of these skeleton chariots. They have, I think, six or eight, nine models, nine models for each unit of chariots. So that is um, 54 chariots, 55 if you include Argon. Truly massive. And this. When I see this here, I'm like, I can't, I can't defend my back line. I mean, look at this. I got, looks like the Bone Giant just missed a shot there. Might have killed two Spearmen, but missed the Fireborn, luckily. Um, yeah, I'm not going to defend my two Archers and my Bolt Thrower. These Chariots have so much mass, they're going to plow right through. Um, and the Spearmen aren't going to be able to stop them the way they would have. He has two units, or three units of Skeletal Horsemen. I only see two of them. Uh, this one's invisible to me. Um, one thing that when you're setting up, if you see this little uh, eyeball icon on your unit, it means it's hidden and the opponent can't see it. So when you're setting up and you're trying to deploy in the woods, make sure that all your units actually display that little icon. Um, otherwise, I can see them. Um, also, somehow today, uh, this information screen has popped up. It's probably a hotkey that I don't know about. Um, but fortunately, we'll be able to uh, see the stats of some units as we go today. Um, my Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers, oh sorry, he's got like uh, six skeleton warriors in the center and a bone giant, as well as Arc on the black, I think I already said that on the chariot, but um, I'm going to start moving the Fireborn away, because I see all these chariots over here, this is the only thing with mass that will be able to stop the chariots, um, and since they're anti-large, they'll do pretty well. Um, his bone giants be popping shots at the Fireborn, as expected, um, but the bone giant's accuracy just seemed to be really bad this battle. I don't think he landed a single shot against the Fireborn this whole battle. I'm going to put it on play, actually. Um, we'll, 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 we'll keep an eye on those Bone Giant shots, because for the most part, he's just going to be coming towards me. I'm going to be kind of positioning my Fireborn over here to intercept the Chariots. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot of Chariots. I don't think I'll be able to cover all of them. Um, yeah, just going to keep popping shots on that Bone Giant with the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. It's great against large targets. Hits very accurately. Um, two out of three of those shots there hit. Um, and it, I think at 350 range versus, I think, 330? 380. So these guys outrange the uh, Bone Giant. Another shot by the Bone Giant just comes in and knocks the guy backwards. I mean, maybe they just got unlucky. I've, I've had great success with the Bone Giant, but I've really only had success on single target models that are large, like something like Archon or Lariel. Um, haven't had a whole lot of success. Um, otherwise, but I pull Lariel over here mostly thinking that they might have invisible units that I can't see um, But they don't so it's kind of a waste. Uh, I really should have kept her closer to the fight She gives a physical resistance to everything around her with the item that I brought. This is also a mistake uh, <laughs> Charging in sword matches of Hoeth. There's a lot of huge micro mistakes here on my part um, That uh, the sword matches of Hoeth just get obliterated by these, you know, skeleton chariots Um Fortunately, they do have relatively high armor and melee defense, and they're just they get they get hit pretty hard on the charge, but they pull out. So that's that. The fate of Buna does go down on the Fireborn. Um, does a lot of damage, but it doesn't kill any models, uh, which is very fortunate. Which means Alariel can heal them, um, and they are still at full combat effectiveness. Basically, uh, so they kill you know one, two chariot models there. Spearmen go and intercept these summon swordsmen, um, but my back line is just utterly fucked right now. Bone Giant missing again, by the way. Uh, should keep a tally of how many shots a Bone Giant misses. Um, Fireborn coming in. I really want to pin down these Chariots or Archon. Um, and as soon as they get in, I'm going to pop an Earth Blood on this group here um, just to heal people up. Because a lot of this damage is to 
health and not to unit models. I mean, these guys are still 62 to 75, and these guys are still 72 to 75. So if I can use my healing, they can get back to full health and join the fight against these swordsmen. Who are they going to utterly annihilate? Um, Swordmasters of Hoeth killing swordsmen, or skeleton swordsmen, is a pleasure to watch. I wonder if we'll have time to do it. Another shot by the uh, Bone Giant, missing again. Um, the regrouped archers back here, I just put them on their skeleton archers. Um, I figure I can't really defend them, so any damage they can get done is great. Um, but then I pull the Fireborn, um, I think, onto the Bone Giant. I think that's my uh, endgame here. We'll see where they go. Another miss shot by the Bone Giant. Incredible. Alariel's here. Um, she definitely wants to heal the Fireborn. Looks at like the Fireborn and go for a rear charge on this group before they before they clear out. That's very smart. Um, freeing up these spearmen here. Um, that was a block shot. To be fair for the Bone Giant, that would have hit if it wasn't for that bit of terrain. Um, but yeah, Star of Avalorn coming down and the Fireborn's health rises. You can just watch. Oh, God, that's beautiful going up. Um, the chariots in the back line still fucking shit up. I mean, what am I going to... I can't stop them from killing these archers. Not a whole lot of reason to try. The, the noble should really get pulled into the main fight instead of chasing around these chariots. He is anti-large. Um, pass that armor sundering for a second. Yeah. Uh, this is not great. Uh, Alariel does get hit pretty hard by the bone giant. I think that's the first successful shot from the bone giant. Um, but his days are numbered as the fireborn with our anti-large come in. I don't know if he has fire weakness as well. Looks like a summon new shopti just appeared into the Swordmasters of Hoeth. And the this, the chariots uh, now rear charging this infantry group, like my Fireborn were doing earlier. That's a, that's a very good idea. Um, since my infantry is superior to his, he definitely needs to assist this fight. At this point, I realize, though, the Fireborn still being full unit model count, 45 models here, um, I can keep healing them. And their chariots are looking a little bit haggard here. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure that my Fireborn could probably solo all of these chariots with, with the Elariel support. So what I want to do is just clean up this infantry fight um, and the Bone Giant and these Skeletal Horsemen. Because once I've done that, it's I've won, basically. The Fireborn will beat the chariots. Um, at, least I'm, at least I think that. That's, that's, my, uh, that's my plan here at this point in time. Um, I do manage to get this Bolt Thrower back online. It's going to keep taking shots. But uh, I found the Bolt Thrower wasn't very accurate against Skeleton Chariots. It seems to be less accurate against um, like monstrous infantry or it does pretty good against cav but it seems to struggle against like model count like eight you know um, like trolls uh, I noticed that it just kind of seems to float between the um, float the shots that seem to kind of float between the models um, with cav it's so tightly packed it doesn't really matter and with single monsters they're very accurate it seems but um yeah, seems to struggle sometimes against fast-moving monsters infantry and chariots in this instance. Although, as I'm saying this, I'm getting lots of hits here. Um, so, kind of just putting my foot in my mouth, so to speak. But these groups re regroup over here. I mean, these units regroup over here. Um, I kind of leave them here. And I, I do notice them, but I leave them here. Because I, I know that if he has to split his chariots up, they're easier to take apart. And if I can save these Swordmasters of Hoeth um, and Spearmen over here and the Noble um, from the Chariots, you know, that's great. And I can use this Force of Collapse on this side over here. Um, wow. Those range on those Archers. That's incredible. Um, Star of Avalorn goes down, healing up the Fireborn, the Swordmasters of Hoeth, um, and the Spearmen. Um, it's going to be great. I mean, Alariel gets healed a little bit too, I guess. Um, but... That, I think, just swings a battle in my favor. I mean, I had that charge the whole time, so technically I always had that power, but um, at this point, the balance of power bar is swinging in my favor pretty heavily. Fireborn going to get a good charge into these skeleton warriors alongside the Swordmasters of Hoeth, and they are just going to disintegrate very quickly. Beta Beetle's going to come down these Fireborn again, though. Um, they've done incredible work. They are still at 42 models, uh, seven minutes into this game, basically, um, and they have just... You know, they have 117 kills in the name. They killed a bone giant. Um, they have not been slacking. Um, so they're going to get in here and kill these chariots with their anti-large, their 43 melee attack, um, and uh, versus the 27 melee defense of the skeleton chariots. And that seems to be a buffed melee defense. They don't seem to have that. Oh, my will be done from Arkin, probably. Definitely my will be done. 
Well, maybe not so definitely. Um, but yeah, at this point, I think uh, the opponent's going to start to crumble off here. Um, it was a good build by my opponent. I like to see chariots getting used like that. They, they did a, the chariots did an amazing amount of work disrupting my back line. Um, I just don't think the bone giant did... I mean, I think the bone giant missed a lot, and maybe that's just RNG. Nothing too much to think about in terms of compositional picks, but... It was, it's certainly interesting to think about, maybe if you had brought two Oshabti Great Bows, um, or an Oshabti Great Bow and some tougher infantry, um, I think you might have gotten some more value from that. I, I tend to prefer Oshabti Great Bows over Bone Giants, even though the Bone Giants do have farther range, simply because the Oshabti Great Bows are useful against a larger number of targets. Um, they can do really good work against infantry, Sword Masters of Hoth are a great target for them, um, they do get wrecked a little bit by Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers, I, I find, especially if they struggle to close the distance. But in this battle, that would have been a problem. Um, and they do do well against someone like a Lariel. Um, I know the Bone Giant is pretty good at that situation, but the Shopti Great Bows are no slouches either. They just have a little bit shorter range. Um, but yeah, we can see the Skeletons just got wrecked. I mean, they got almost no kills, but these Chariots did really well. This um, Skeleton Horseman Archers, I think were mostly put on the Fireborn. So they weren't getting a whole lot of kills. Um, I think they would have done well to get behind my lines and shoot the back of my infantry. But that is neither here nor there. So we're going to do Vamps versus Skaven. This is against a player named Simba, who I've seen on ladder quite a bit recently. And he is a, he is a nightmare to play against. Um, so yeah, in this battle I brought a fair amount of Cav for what I normally bring as the uh, Vampire Counts, because I love running through Skaven with Cavalry. Um, to start off the match, we have three groups of Black Knights. One has the Lances and Barding for the extra charge bonus. We have the Tithe, um, and a couple Grave Guard of the Great Weapons, um, a couple Skeleton Warriors, um, I think a unit of Grave Guard and the Sternsmen, or two Graveguard and the Sternsman. Um, two Felbats, a Skeleton Warrior. Um, that's all for me. Um, I have the Strigoi, sorry, I have the Strigoi Vampire Lord. I was trying to try him, I was going to try him out. Um, it's Crypt Ghoul Summons, Crypt Horror Summons. And then a Necromancer on a Chariot for the uh, regeneration. Um, I think the Necromancer also has Invocation of the Heck. Um, for my opponent here, we got uh, three Skaven Slaves in the front, a Warp Lightning Cannon. Uh, I love that pick. Even on this map, we have some really weird terrain. Um, I do like that pick. Um, got a couple Clan Rat Spears. I think he has a total of six. Um, yeah, two of them have shield, the rest do not. Four Plague Monks, excellent choice against uh, Vampire Infantry. Um, won't do too great against the Grave Guard, but they will certainly clean up skeletons in a hurry. Um, two Poison Wind Globadiers, expecting me to bring some large monsters, I think. Um, a Warp Fire Thrower. I haven't had great success with this unit, guys. I don't know if I'm not using it right, but it seems to be like a worse version of Iron Drakes for the Dwarves. Um, I guess it does have magical ammunition, so maybe it does shine more against uh, an opponent with physical resist or something. Um, a Plague Priest on a uh, Screaming Bell, Screaming Orb, Clanging Bell. Um, I do think when I'm playing this game, uh, I, I look at this and I see a Warp Lightning Cannon um, for most of the game. So that's a big mistake. I, I treat it as if it's a War Lightning Cannon. And then Tretch Graventale. One of those lords that I bring when I don't want to pay attention to my lord as this game. Um, Alright. So, the lines are going to match up here. As far as an infantry fight goes, this is a, a less than spectacular infantry fight. Um, I get a little blobbed up at, at certain points here. Um, fortunately, there's no warpstone armor or anything, but um, anyways, we're going to engage. The Strigoi uh, Vampire Lord going to jump in to these Skaven Slaves, and uh, I mean, he has great melee lines. 75, 50, um, with 410 weapon strength. Not the best weapon strength, but I mean, his, his stat line is pretty, pretty solid for a wizard, essentially. Um, but as far as, you know, uh, thinking that this unit here is a Warp Lightning Cannon. Here comes the uh, Cryptors, ready to take out that Warp Lightning Cannon. Except they find themselves in the middle of Plague Monks, with Tretch, and a Plague Priest. Um, doesn't go well. Um, skeleton engagement's going on here. I 
pull some of my units around the flank, hoping to get the graveyard around the side, but they just get mismicroed and thrown in here. Um, the Black Knights, though, these are going to be the units to watch. I get the Felbats onto the warp uh, cannon crew, um, and I'm going to use the cavalry to make them decide. Because um, if I if they turn around and charge this, I can just charge them in the back. And if they stay here, then the Felbats can kill the gunnery crew. They do a good job, though, pushing away here. I managed to pull one unit through and into the Plague Monks. Into the plague monks. Um, they're just kind of go through the gap that was created by those plague monks backing up. Um, but I do see a um, the uh, Poison Wing Globadiers and the Plague Priest coming back and then the Cla Clan Rat Salmon coming down. So I pull these Black Knights just away. Not interested in taking that fight with the Artillery Crew so well defended and charging uphill into Artillery Piece is a good way to get stuck. They do take a great um, couple shots though with these uh, those Poison Wing Globadiers and another Miss Micro here. I mean this battle is just full of it where the uh, Clan Rat Spears get onto my Black Knights because uh, I didn't know where they were. Um, but the Lancer with Barding and a pull around, and the Warp Lightning crew routes off. Um, so I just I just chase them down. I mean, not the greatest use of the um, Black Knights, but it certainly does, does well. Um, so I ride them down, and I quickly see this blob here. It really needs my help. Um, so I think I pull these Black Knights into the uh, Clan Rat Spears up here. Yep. And then the fell bats uh, are just gonna chase these units off. They're both targeted on one. I mean, micro problems. This game is what I'm gonna say, guys. Um, the fell bats, one unit should have been targeted on this other escape and slave over here, just to make sure it ratted off a little quicker. And still, the black knights fight the clan rats. Fortunately, black knights have pretty decent melee defense at 30, um, so they only the clan rats have like a 25% chance to actually hit them, um, and they have to punch the armor too. So it's not too bad. Um, but as far as this grindy, attritious fight goes, I mean, I am way too blobbed. I know the vampires usually like to blob up to get use out of their necromancer's healing or invocation of the heck, but I just am not playing this very intelligently in terms of uh, spreading out my troops. Some graveyard do get through um, into the poison wing globadiers. Um, I'm trying to take them out because they keep shooting my necromancer, and he is providing healing. I do want him to continue to provide healing because that's very useful. Um, the fell bats, yeah. Miss Micro, that's the name of the game here. Felbats, one unit should have kept on the clan rats, and another unit should come back and routed off the uh, Warp Lightning crew. Um, should be splitting them up more to run stuff off, because they're very good at running stuff off the map, and if the more that runs off the map, the less have to fight, I mean, that would be great. So the Black Knights get a good rear charge into the, uh, kind of the firing line of the Poison and Globadiers and some uh, Plague Monks, and, uh, they get left in there a little bit long. Um, the Black Knights with Lancing and Barding also coming in. Uh, I do rat off the Clan Rat Spears, but I'm sure they'll come right back as soon as they get far enough away. Um, the Felbats are trying to chase stuff off. Um, they get assigned that eventually. Black Knights turn around, get a quick charge into these uh, Clan Rat Spears. Um, one thing to, uh, to note about um, my usage of Black Knights here against uh, Spear units is that I do charge them head-on quite often, but only when they're charging me and not Braze, because these guys do have charge defense against large foes, but it only applies when they're not when they're facing the target and not moving. Um, so I kind of take advantage of my opponent charging at me with Spears to get a counter charge, basically. Just another, you know, the same blobby fight we were looking at before, but now I'm losing it. Um, the Tithe, the Grave Guard, uh, are not doing too well against these Plague Monks. Um, kind of lost track of the Strigoi here, but he has been fighting Tretch, and it looks like he came out victorious. I mean, he's, he's hit his healing cap, unfortunately, um, but he has chased off Tretch. Um, now, Tretch is a sneaky little guy, but he's routing, so it should be easy, right? Just run him down with some uh, Black Knights. That's apparently what I choose to do. Um, but, I don't know, running down single model units with uh, with cavalry doesn't always work for you. Sometimes they path through and then the unit rallies. I think that actually happens this game. So the fell bats, once again, chasing these guys off. But instead of, you know, sticking behind them, I stick on them, which means that they start running back towards me. This uh, warfire, or warfire thrower crew is also back online. I mean, yeah, I'm quite separated in this battle. It's pretty spread out, but um, there's a lot of engagements. Bad micro. Anyways, 
Black Knight's coming through. They're going to try and head off this uh, charge from the Clan Rat Spears into the back of the Plague Monks. Kind of get a slow motion charge there from some of these. Oof. You guys get flung. Would not want to get back up from that. Although a few of them still do. Um, but yeah, the Black Knights did path through Tretch. Um, as a result, he rallied and then fought off the Black Knights. Because he has 70 melee defense. Um, and he's anti-large. So... I could have picked a better unit to chase him down with. Um, even, you know, zombies probably would have done a better job than what I what I did there with the Black Knights. But we got some regrouping Poison Wing Globadiers. Those guys are going to get rear charged by the Black Knights. Um, the Necromancer is now just solo fighting this Plague plague Priest, and I don't like that. I mean, I don't want the Necromancer anywhere near this fight. Um, well, I want him near it. I just don't want him in it. And Tretch is coming in, too, with his anti-large, and that is looking scary. Um, but... Overall, balance of power is pretty even right now. Um, if I can keep, you know, routing his units off, that's good. I mean, the fell bats seem to have taken care of the warp fire thrower and whatever units were up against the wall over there, and those are getting routed off now. Um, these black knights still have 16 models left, and this group is very healthy with 42 models. Um, I don't have a whole lot of infantry left, which is scaring me, because this uh, Tretch and Plague Priest are doing a lot of work. Um, but here comes a rear charge into the... Poison Wind Globadiers. Boom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing a recording. Um, I'm doing a recording right now. But, yeah, so the Black Knights come in and uh, hit the Poison Wind Globadiers. The Plague Priest is still going hard and fucking up my uh, Grave Guard here. They're starting to crumble, which is a problem. Um, the Necromancer is out of Winds of Magic, and Tretch is still very healthy, so it's not looking good. Um, the Felbats are going to start getting pulled back in here because he has a lot of regrouping infantry that is becoming a problem. The Black Knight's getting a good rear charge into the Plague Monks. Um, and, uh, yeah. I mean, the Black Knights are going to come around here and hit those Plague Monks again. Get a great downhill charge. I think downhill charges still do more damage. I remember that was a mechanic in previous Total Wars. I don't know if that's for sure still a thing. Um, anyways, Black Knights and to keep heading off units you know, trying to rejoin this fight because the Black Knights aren't going to do great against Tretch, but um, they will do a good job at heading off Skaven Slaves or Clan Rats and just getting that single charge in and doing a lot of damage. Um, so we get a route on those guys. In fact, a shatter. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. Um, the Necromancer's low. Got to pull these fell bats back and get them on the Plague Priest with their high melee defense. I think they're like 44 melee defense. Um, Black Knight's still <laughs> roaming around the battle. These these battles here have just been about the uh, cav units. Um, getting a great charge on those Plague Monks. Sending them scattering. Um, that shatters their leadership. And the match for them is over. Um, the Plague Priest... Still going strong, and there's no infantry left to support the um, screaming, the sorry, the necromancer on his corpse cart. Um, the black knight's coming back in, hopefully to try and head off these clan rat spears. But my opponent now has been seeing what I'm doing, and now now decides to brace and stop, which is very annoying because my black knights can't just charge into that. So they turn around real quick. And instead, Tretch is running at them. So as I said, I say, okay, well he doesn't get his charge offense. Um, if he's charging at me. But, uh, yeah. Still 70, or 97 melee defense, because he's got a buff going right now. And so, I am not going to hit him. Um, so he starts this engagement with 378 hit points. And he's going to leave it with, uh, 363, so he gets hit once, by the looks of it. The Black Knight's pulling away. Um, I'm not going to go for these Plague Monks, even though they do their backs turn and aren't being used because these clan rat spears are much more important um i don't want them to get on into this fight here but this is just so close um the necromancer is almost dead 314 health the plague priest is just smacking on the um bats and that is basically it the black knights are going to crumble and game over well played to simba i mean serious props uh that was a well-played match. His micro, I think, was much better there than mine. Um, but I got good use out of the Black Knights. Um, I mean, the Graveguard did pretty well against his, his troops. I mean, his low-tier clan rats and Skaven slaves. But that's not that important. It's the Knights that really, I think, had some impact this game. This Dragoy, uh, he was a good fighter. He, did, he you know, dueled out Tretch pretty effectively. Um, and I do like the idea of summoning Cryptors um, and Crypt Ghouls. 
since they are a little bit more mobile than skeletons and zombies. But that said, I didn't use it that effectively. Um, it, I only showed you that one cast. I did summon a Crypt Ghoul unit and get some more healing off, but I didn't use the magic very effectively this match. Uh, I feel like a Wind of Death probably would have done a lot of work uh, here. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, I know this wasn't a double feature with uh, the same faction both times, but if you use your imagination, I mean, this army here is really just the undead raised high elves from the last battle. Um, Alariel has, you know, not kept her looks, but, uh, you know, that happens when you get turned into a flesh-eating monster. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day.